Lord, we believe it. Lord, we receive it. Come on. Oh, we receive it. In the Bacoria Tanze, the Bacoria Sota. Father, we decree that this territory receives your prophetic word, your spermatic word. Thank you that the seed of your prophetic word, Lord, takes root in the soil of this city. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for a quick, speedy, immediate return. In the name of Jesus, can I get 50 believers to lift their voices and and shout a moment come on I said lift your voices and shout a moment father we believe it hey we believe it we believe it tonight we believe it tonight come on lift those hands stay right there man of God let's lift those hands a moment mm. Mm. lift those hands listen what I want you to do There's been a lot of prophetic words released. And uh, we're in a, not only a season, but an era of quick manifestation. And I'm believing that over the next six months we'll see a supernatural return on every prophetic word that's been released particularly in this assembly so I, all I need you to do watch this is agree with praise come on that's all come on just open up your mouth and agree with praise come on just a few minutes, Father, we agree. We agree. We agree. We agree. We agree with your will. We agree with your plan. We agree with your decisions for this territory. And as Mary declared, according to your word, be it unto us in Jesus' name. Thank you for those angels that are here, that are with us, that are called to assist us in the advancing of your kingdom. Thank you that it will be said that we've been in your presence and we will never be the same again in Jesus' mighty name clap those hands just one more time and give him praise remain standing just for a moment while you're celebrating the Lord celebrate the angels of this house come on come on the gifts of God the apostolic leaders the Wayne and show white here come on celebrate God with the um Destiny Center, you ought to be shouting. Come on. Oh, hallelujah. Let me do this really quickly so I can get in the word. Celebrate All Nations Church and Network. Come on. Come on, celebrate All Nations Church and Network. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of God uh, if I don't do it that way we'll be up here all night honoring people but we do honor uh, the Lord for uh, our church and network all of those who are aligned and connected and uh, last but never least in my life uh, my wife we thank God for her thank God for her yeah Hallelujah. She, she's not stuck on that kind of stuff, but I want to make sure I go home and it's right. Amen. Amen. I, I do have uh, such a word uh, bumbling in my spirit uh, that I believe is going to really uh, bless this house and uh, this network. 
uh, and just really this uh, city. It's really stirring strong in my spirit. Thankful that uh, my mom traveled down, amen, <laughs> traveled down with us. Thankful to God, amen, for her deciding to come and uh, be with us. Let me ask you a question. How many are ready to receive the word of God tonight? I said, how many are ready to receive the word of God tonight? Listen, listen. So, tonight, uh, the way we're going to move, I need you to jump right on this train and move with me. Uh, what we're going to share, uh, I believe, will be apostolic. It will be revelatory, but it will strengthen uh, what this house is doing uh, and what uh, this house is about to come into and the people of this house. Some of what I'll say, uh, you'll probably have to go back and uh, watch the replay, thankfully, that uh, you're recording, uh, but I believe that it will bless you tonight. For the sake of time, because we're going to bounce uh, around, you can stay seated for the reading of the word of God. Amen. Uh, Dwayne and she'll be all right with that. Say amen. They'll be all right. For the sake of where we're going to go and what we're going to share, uh, I want you, if you will, uh, no disrespect to uh, your tradition. Uh, just want to move right into this. Amen. Grab your Bibles and turn with me to Nehemiah, the second chapter, and we will grab one verse from the second chapter, and we'll move from Nehemiah, the second chapter, all throughout the book of Nehemiah. So if you're taking notes, I'm going to drop a lot of scriptures just to make sure that uh, what we're preaching is Bible. Say amen. Uh, and I believe that uh, as you listen and as you put a demand on the grace of God, we will experience the power of God tonight. Say amen. Nehemiah chapter number 2, verse number 13. When you have it, shout amen. Nehemiah 2, verse number 13. This is Nehemiah, and he says, And I went out by night by the gate of... Of the valley, even before the dragon well, and to the dung port, and viewed the walls of Jerusalem, which were broken down, and the gates, and the gates thereof, they were consumed with fire. Shout amen. I want to share a word tonight about apostolically restoring the gates. Apostolically restoring the gates. So when you leave out of here tonight, I want you to have in your spirit restoring the gates. Restoring the gates. Last month, we began to deal with apostolic ministry. We talked about uh, proton uh, believers. And as we share tonight, about restoring the gates. I'm going to take you through the book of Nehemiah and show you uh, how God desires for us now to restore the gates within our cities, restore the gates within our local churches, and uh, what happens when we do restore the gates. Nehemiah uh, is one of my favorite books, and I always... Uh, somehow or another throughout a year end up in the book of Nehemiah because though Nehemiah is an Old Testament figure, uh, he's really symbolic of a New Testament uh, apostle, apostolic leader, and he really represents the building aspect uh, of an apostolic leader, an apostolic people, how they build, how they restore, how they repair, how they put things back. So often when we uh, look at the book of Nehemiah or when it's taught to us, oftentimes what's taught to us is the walls of Jerusalem being repaired or restored. 
Uh, but it's not often that we hear about the gates. Not only were the walls important uh, in that they needed to be restored, but the gates uh, that was connected to the walls of Jerusalem also needed to be uh, restored. I want to do something because I want you to see this and I want to uh, bring you uh, into a 21st century context. But I want you to see when we begin to deal with this apostolically restoring the gates, what it looked like uh, in an Old Testament context and how it really applies to us today, how God today is raising up his proton, his sent people uh, those that have the anointing of the first on them to go and to restore these particular gates. Now, I'm going to give you quite uh, a bit of scriptures just so that uh, you can follow uh, with me all the way through to see how this is going to happen. Uh, Genesis 22 and verse number 17, you don't have to turn there, just write it down. One of the things that God uttered out of his mouth that relates to us today is that he would give us the ability to possess the gates of our enemies. He would give us the anointing to possess the gates of our enemies. Nehemiah, uh, I always like to start here, uh, is one who literally means Yah or Yahweh as we would call it. He comforts and encourages those in whom he sins. Uh, in other words, it is this picture of if God sends you, he will comfort you and he will protect you and he will keep you. Uh, Nehemiah is this Old uh, Testament picture of this New Testament apostle. And, of course, we know how he experienced opposition. We know uh, how uh, he had to raise up a people that would put uh, weapons in one hand and uh, a, a building tools in another. Uh, because here it is, Nehemiah had to war and he had to work, but he had to also have people who were willing to war and to work with him. We find throughout the book of Nehemiah around chapter number 4 and verse number 6 it says that Nehemiah was able to do what he was able to do because the people had a mind to work. And so Nehemiah was able to gather uh, the people on a common goal, a common vision, and they had a mindset to work, not only to restore the walls of Jerusalem, but to restore the gates. Now, let me say this tonight, because I want you in your spirit, when we begin to talk about uh, apostolically restoring the gates, I want you to leave here believing that God's going to anoint you to go and restore Store the gates. Now let's do this because when we see this, I want to show you throughout the book of Nehemiah how what we have today and what we call uh, the seven mountains is not something that is new. It's actually in the Bible, and I'd like to say this, and I'm not stretching this, but what we call the seven mountains today was what was operating at the gates in the Old Testament. Okay? So, so, so as we navigate through this, you're going to see that at the gates of the Old Testament, there is this picture of art and entertainment, picture of business, picture of education, family, government, media, and religion. You'll see uh, why it is that God will give us an assignment to go and to restore the gates, not only the walls, but to restore the gates. Let's start here, and then I'm going to roll right through the book of Nehemiah. So if you're writing, uh, you're going to have to take this down quickly, but I promise you it's going to hit uh, your spirit tonight. Uh, when we look at uh, gates, when we look at gates throughout the Old Testament, we understand that gates represent 
access and authority. Also, gates were where governmental decisions were made in the gates of the city. Uh, not only in the gates of the city were governmental decisions made, but it was at the gates of the city that the elders sat at the gates. The book of Lamentations, it tells us, it says that the elders have ceased from the gates. Uh, that's a picture of when men and women, uh, what we're going to deal with here in a moment, gatekeepers move out of position. And when they move, something occupies the gate. When leaders and churches that have been assigned to the gates move out of the gates, something else begins to occupy the gates. And I believe that in territories around America and around the world, but in particular here in Richmond, some gatekeepers have moved out of the gates. But God's about to do something. And, 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 and understanding this, uh, we, we see that throughout the Old Testament, business transactions happen at the gates of the city. Uh, Nehemiah comes, and of course, he rebuilds the walls. But Nehemiah, being this type of apostolic ministry, he restored the gates. He restored the gates not only the walls, but he restored the gate. The picture of this is that every local church needs to restore the gates in the local church before they restore the gates in the city. They need to restore the gates in the local church before they restore the gates in the city. And you'll see this throughout all of these scriptures I'm going to give you because most of the cities... In the Old Testament, they were large towns, and they were surrounded by walls of some kind, and they were fenced in. And the whole purpose uh, of this was for their defense. It was not only for their defense, but what they wanted to happen was, it was this idea that they were keeping enemies out of the city by not only having this wall, but on this wall, there were gates all around this wall. In the context of uh, where we're going to go tonight, in uh, these walls of Jerusalem, throughout the book of Nehemiah, there was about 12 major gates that was on the walls of Jerusalem that when the walls got burned down, these 12 gates got burned also. 12 representing uh, apostolic ministry. There's 12 tribes of Israel. It was 12 uh, apostles. It's really a picture of how the enemy hates apostolic ministry and he wants to tear it down. He hates apostolic churches. He hates uh, churches that are full of present truth. Throughout the Old Testament, you see that uh, not only did we just see that there was this business that was in the gates, but literally uh, there was a marketplace outside the gate. Uh, a marketplace where they sold and where they brought. Uh, that would be a picture of the business mountain. Uh, right there uh, at the gate, you find, watch this, that respected city elders. And this was not by age, but this was by influence. Would talk at the gates, and they would talk because what the city elders would do is they would pass along what they came up with so that the politicians would listen to what they came up with. Now stay with me because you're going to see this in every city and why it is important for us to follow this seven mountain blueprint. Throughout the Bible, we find how God would mess with his prophets. He would tell his prophets, Jeremiah chapter number 7, verse number 2. Jeremiah 17, verse number 19. He tell them, go to the gate of the city and prophesy. Go to the gate of the city and prophesy. This was important because God understood that what we call now the seven mountains 
was housed in the Old Testament gate. All right. So he said, prophets, I want you to go and prophesy at the gate of the city. Because in other words, when we look at it prophetically, he's saying, I want you to go and prophesy to the mountains. Prophesy to the seven mountains. Now, when we look at this, we're going to see how if we understand that all of this happened at the gates, then there is what we have heard for years, this term called gatekeepers. And we've always emphasized gatekeepers, but we've never emphasized a gatekeeping people. So, so we put the responsibility on just leaders and not raising up a gatekeeping people to help to maintain the gates. Stay with me now. Which, 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 which means, because last month we began to talk about how God's desire was not only to restore apostles, but to restore an apostolic dimension. Where the church begins to rise, where you not only have apostles, but you have a sent people. So God not only wants gatekeepers, but he wants a gatekeeping people who take responsibility for the mountain that they're called to man. Are you with me? They they're, 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 they're come alongside an apostolic vision. And they say, you know what? We are called to help to rule in the gates. We're not sitting back as spectators. We're not sitting back uh, just uh, as cheerleaders. We get skin in the game because we have to help and assist our gatekeepers to keep the gates. I talk Bible because the whole Shamar thing is gatekeeping. We're shamaring. We're shamaring people. We're policing. We're watching uh, because we're helping to be gatekeepers. But when we understand biblically what a gatekeeper was, simply uh, was a, a porter, one who guarded access to a place, uh, one uh, who guarded access to a city or a temple. Uh, a gatekeeper was a person of authority. Gatekeepers were responsible. One of their main responsibilities was uh, they needed to prevent enemies from entering into the city city. Uh, as a New Testament people, we understand that apostles and prophets are gatekeepers for cities. Apostles and prophets are gatekeepers for regions. And the absence of these gifts opens up the gates to the enemy. Now stay with me because I know I'm, I'm, I'm going to go around a long way to get you to, watch this, a simple revelation. When Nehemiah gets this assignment to go and to rebuild, he not only had to rebuild the walls, he knew he would have to restore the gates. Now, hear me, Richmond, and hear me clearly. The gates of, uh, of this city has to be restored, but the gates must be restored in the body of Christ of Richmond. You can't restore the gates of the city if you don't restore the gates in the context of the local church. If the local church does not believe certain things, it's almost impossible for you to believe God to give you the gates of the city. Now, 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 hear me, because I, I, I want to, I want, I want to slowly, I want to walk into this, because I want you to grab a hold of this, because when uh, he comes along, uh, yes, Nehemiah, he first of all, we know he builds the walls, and what he leaves left is that in, after he builds the walls uh, to the walls of Jerusalem, there's openings all around the walls, because he's got. To put the gates on the hinges. And all of these gates. 12 of them. That he had to restore. Represented something within the context. Of the local church. 
but also representing something, watch this, territorial in a region. And I want you to see that Nehemiah comes, and when he comes, he saw that the walls were destroyed, but he said the gates were consumed with fire. It's one of the Old Testament things that the enemy did. Uh, and you know that when an enemy invaded a territory, one of the things that the enemy from another territory did was when they left, they would burn everything. And the thought was, if we burn it, it will never be restored or repaired. First Samuel chapter number 30, when David and his men come back to Ziglag, what happened? It was burned. With fire, the enemy was simply trying to say, I've taken everything and I've burned it to a place where you'll never be able to rebuild it. That's what the enemy does in territories. I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to burn the city down and you'll never be able to rebuild it again. Watch this, but nudge your neighbor and say, we've got an anointing to restore the gates. I'm coming. There's an anointing to restore these gates. Watch this. And, and, and hear me in context. When I'm talking about restoring the gates, I'm talking about many of you being released into a mountain. Not just in the context of the local church, but God sending you into the gate of business in your city. To begin to deal with demonic traffic that's been getting in the territory through the business mountain. Are you with me? In the gate of media. To deal with what's been trafficking in media to get in your city. Now watch this. Now when I bring this to a local church context, I'm also going to bring it to a city, a regional context, so that you can see why these gates need to be restored. Look at Nehemiah uh, chapter number 3, verse number 15. Right there, part right there, Nehemiah 3, 15. And we're going to run through this. Now watch this. Nehemiah 3 and verse number 15. I'm not going to read all of the verse. I'm going to highlight the gates that were repaired, the gates that were restored. Nehemiah 3.15 says, but the gate of the fountain was repaired. So now, Nehemiah has people working with him and they're helping him to restore the gates. The Bible says, in Nehemiah 3, 15, that the fountain gate was repaired. The fountain gate represents the flow of the Holy Spirit. It represents the flow of the Spirit of God. This is very important because if we're going to see the flow of the Spirit in the territory, we have to see the flow of the Spirit in the local church. So the local church must restore the fountain gate. The fountain gate must be restored in the local church, the flow of the Holy Spirit, because what it is saying is, while we need doctrine, we need demonstration. We're not throwing doctrine out because we need sound doctrine. But we need married to doctrine demonstration. And demonstration that we need is the demonstration of the spirit. Now understanding, you can see this throughout the New Testament. Mark chapter number 16 Verse number 20 says, and they went forth and preached everywhere. And the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following amen. It is a picture of what we call this fountain gate being restored. Our churches need to be churches that are open for revival. The problem is 
There's a lot of people praying for what they've not prepared for. A lot of people praying for revival, but revival is ugly. <laughs> revival gets messy. Uh, people praying for a glory that they don't have a foundation ready for. A lot of people asking God, send your glory, but when his glory, which is his kabah, when his weight comes, his weight breaks up their foundation. Because the only biblical foundation that glory can stand on is the foundation that he established. is Jesus Christ being the cornerstone, watch this, uh, and apostles and prophets. And many people are crying for glory, but when he comes with glory, that glory might shake that foundation. So if you really want glory, you've got to be careful because it may shake everything up. Everything in that church may have to shift, may have to change. This is, somebody say fountain gate. I got, I got to move because I want to build you to it. But this is that fountain gate. So see this. See in Destiny Center the move of the Spirit. It's here because the gate of the fountain is being restored. So now we can believe because the fountain gate in the house is restored, we can believe that the found gate outside the house will be restored. No, it's, 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 it's false advertisement. To preach, teach, or say things that you don't have. You know, we're in a day and a time, uh, if you look at a lot of these folks' flyers, you would think they really got something. I'm, no, listen to me. Uh, listen, we need marketing. Come on, no, don't, go, don't, don't miss. We need a good marketing. But watch this. Some of these folks got all of this stuff on their fly, miracle signs and wonders, and there's not any wind. No wind blowing nowhere. But they advertise signs, wonders, miracle, breakthroughs. No, we've got to make sure that the fountain gate is restored in our house so that when the people come from out and come within, we already have the fountain gate restored. And this is what we are contending for. We're saying now because the fountain gate has been restored in the house, we're believing for the fountain gate to go outside the house. Stay with me. So Nehemiah, chapter number three, verse number one. Chapter number three, verse number one. Chapter number three, verse number one, you see the sheep gate. Here is the sheep gate. But let me help you apostolically because the sheep gate represents the pastoral being restored or repaired. But. But in the context of not only the local church, the pastoral being restored. And the reason why I think that this is really important, because when God restores a thing, sometimes there can be extremes to that restoration. So in the body of Christ, he restored the uh, ascension gift of the apostle and prophet. And now everybody is an apostle and prophet. But there has to be the pastoral. Yes, Come on. It, it has to be within. Now, 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 now that's just local church. I'm speaking there. Okay. I'm speaking there. Local church. I'm speaking pastoral. But let's go. Let's go further. Because this sheep gate has to be restored in the region. This means there is gatekeepers and a gatekeeping people who are looking at the bigger picture. Dwayne, sure, they're not pastoring a church, they're pastoring a city. Hmm. We're not looking just to pastor a people in the building. We're looking at pastoring the city. In other words, when the mayor needs prophetic counsel. When the city council needs prophetic advice and wisdom, watch this, they come to those prophetic churches because, watch, because this sheep gate is restored. I always say it like this, if you reach the city, the world will come looking for you. The sheep gate is this gate, this pastoral 
gate. It's this, now catch me, it's this thing where I'm so tired of in the apostolic because you have men and women who are not mature in their apostolic office do they say things like this because they think that because you're an apostle you don't have a pastoral dimension so I ain't, gonna, I ain't worried about all that because you know I'm an apostle I let somebody else worry about that well Jesus the chief apostle left the 99 to go after the one Back, come on somebody that's pastoral watch this and every real apostle has a shepherding dimension to him he or she may not shepherd a local church but they will have a shepherding dimension this is watch this is the sheep gate somebody say the sheep gate so right now you see the fountain gate we want that gate to be restored that represents the flow of the Holy Spirit. You see, the sheep gate, which is this, watch this, this pastoral being restored. Nehemiah 3 and 3, you see the fish gate. So all of these gates, even though the walls were restored, Jerusalem was incomplete, the walls, until the gates were restored. Until the gates were repaired. Now watch this. You can have a good assembly. But these 12 gates must be restored in the context of the local church. So watch this. We can do it in a city. We can do it in a region. So watch this. The fifth gate represents evangelism. Um. When's the last time we've seen an ordination for evangelists? All these enthronement and other kind of services they're having. But where are the evangelists? Some of them are locked up in a traditional setting with a wrong understanding of what an evangelist is. But God is stirring again. The evangelistic dimension. Or else what happens is, watch this, in our assemblies, we preach to the same people. Because the fish gate needs to be restored, which, watch, goes beyond just the ascension gift of the evangelist. It puts responsibility on the gatekeeping people. When's the last time you want to sold to Christ? When's the last time you witnessed to somebody? When's the last time you told somebody your testimony? This is, this, is, this is the sheep gate. The reason why our churches, uh, I'm sorry, this is the fish gate. The reason why our churches die is for the lack of evangelism. 21st century, it don't have to be. The old school way. I mean, folks don't want to take no tracks no more. <laughs> it's creative evangelism. It's gas on God, groceries on God, laundromat outreach. Pay for the whole community to get their uh, clothes washed. But while they coming in, you preach the gospel to them right there in the laundromat. Come on here. It, it, we, we, we have innovation. We have creativity. But watch now. We, we, we have this, uh, What? but, but we're still uh, Doing it evangelistically. So now hear me. Hear me. Hear me now. Sometimes uh, what we see happening. Now just follow me a moment. We see uh, uh, Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses manning the gates. But we have the power but they're willing to get out. Right now we've got Hebrew Israelites. And it's moving big in America. And hear what I'm saying because they get out and they evangelize. They'll stand on the corner, preach their false doctrine. But the church will, will sing Kumbaya. When the anointing of the sent one is an anointing to go out. 
hear me, hear me. This means, watch, this means there has to be the restoring of some gates, the fish gate. Somebody say the fish gate. Sit down a moment. I want to I want to I want to deal with this because watch. I believe I believe Richmond. And hear me, hear me good. A part of revival. A part of revival is a spirit of evangelism always comes out of revival. It spreads. People start getting saved everywhere. Grocery stores, gas stations, schools, everywhere, because that's a result that revival's in it. Now watch this. Let's not have revival and not restore the gates. Because when revival, because watch this, we believe for sustained revival. But if it's not sustained, we want to make sure that we take advantage of that revival by way of reformation. So watch, we have revival, but then this is what we'll do. We will bring reformation. We will reform things while revival is going on. I give you this picture all the time because where we're going, watch this, is that if you take Clado and you leave that Clado out, and that Clado for days gets hard, you cannot put any kind of form in that clado because it's hard as a rock. But if you take that same clado and drop it in water, which is revival, and let it soak in that water, you can put your hand in that water, take the clado out, and you can begin to form. So the greatest time. For reformation is times of revival. So reformation is not an enemy of revival. And you have people fighting. We need reformation. We need revival. We need both. We need revival and reformation. Because what we want to happen is we want the uh, heavy presence of God and souls being saved and miracles and signs and wonders. But we want reformation because reformation is we want present truth restored in the hearts of the people. Watch this. That may be able to initiate another revival. Are you hearing me? So watch this because I, I, I want you to see this uh, in the context of Nehemiah and I want you to see this uh, 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 as you see yourself tonight now watch because the next gate is Nehemiah 3 and 6 Nehemiah 3 and 6 uh, we just had Nehemiah 3 and 3 the fish gate Nehemiah 3 and 6 represents somebody say the old gate hmm. let me caution us while God is doing a new thing there are foundational truths that will never change. The old gate represents previous moves of God that you and I have to respect what God did before. Not make a monument out of it, but watch this. Let it be something that activates our faith to believe God for something greater. We talk about Azusa Street, and we love what God did at Azusa Street. We're benefiting now from Azusa Street. We talk about all of the historical revivals, but watch this. We are not to part there. Jesus gave us a principle in John chapter number 4. Look what he did. In John chapter number 4, when Jesus comes, and look at this. There's this woman at the well. Jesus comes, and the Bible says he was tired physically from his journey. And he sits on the well. And then when he sits on the well, he starts preaching to her about a new well. So, so catch this. That it, he's honoring the well of Jacob while exciting her faith for the well that is standing right before her. So if you're going to see new wells dug, you got to watch this respect the former.
Gomer wells by sitting on them. So now in, in the context of a, a, of a city, if you come in and God's giving you an assignment, that's powerful, but you've got to sit on the wells of fathers of the city. What have they done in the city that you can commend and you can bless and you can honor? I'm not talking about their faults. I'm not talking about their failures. I'm talking about what was it that God used them to restore in that city that that city needed at that particular time? And sit on that well while you prophesying. God, that's what God did then. But this is what God is about to do now. Somebody say the old well. This old, this old well, this old uh, uh, gate, watch this, represents all uh, of uh, these old moves of God. Now, we can go through them. I don't have time uh, to do that because I want to get to a certain point. Now, watch this. Uh, but we see through the 16th uh, uh, century, we see that, watch this, uh, here's an old gate that God used Martin Luther to restore, the justification by faith. We see the 17th century, the Wesley brothers, uh, they restored uh, holy holiness and sanctification we see the 18th and 19th century the missions movement we see the 20th century and the 1900s we see the Pentecostal movement the 1940s the latter rain movement the 1950s the evangelistic movement with the restoration of miracles and healings the 1960s the restoration of deliverance the deliverance movement the 1970s the world the faith movement watch this the 1980s the prophetic movement the 1990s the apostolic movement 2000 there was this transfer of wealth watch this and 2020 and beyond now hear me and hear me in context one of the things about this 2020 and this decade of destiny and this is what the Lord said for America and hear me in context you know my heart one of the movements that's about to happen in America America is the restitution to African Americans. Now, now, now hear me. God told me in the middle of the pandemic that we would see this day. And the anointing of the first is coming, watch this, on people that were dragged to this land who were told they would never be able to hold certain positions in this land. But there's an anointing coming, y'all better hear me, coming on us in America, and God's going to repay us. I'm not talking about just some houses and a few mules. I'm talking about territories, y'all better hear me. And, and, and it doesn't matter how people... And hear me now, and hear me in context. While I believe in setting a multicultural thing, hear me, I was talking to Shore earlier. Let's be careful that we don't lose our expression. <laughs> While going into other communities that only want our gifts, our anointings, our wisdom, but they don't want us to be on our boards, on their inner circles. It's called racism and it's still alive in our church. It's still alive. And watch this. As long as you come, as long as you bless us, but we're not going to let you get on the inside. And the moment you buck, we're going to let you go. But I'm, oh, I'm out here. But watch this. But there's an anointing. Somebody say there's an anointing. Watch this for the restoring of gates. I got to go. I got to go. I promise I'm not going to keep you all night. But watch. Nehemiah re reveals that all of these gates need to be restored. Watch. Uh, uh, Nehemiah 3 and 14 is the dung gate. Yeah. Oh, my. Yeah. The dung gate is ministries who will not be afraid to do deliverance. So watch, deliverance in the context of the local church, the people get free, but open it up, deliverance for the city. Now here's the thing, here's the thing about that is, what we say here is, you don't have to be a member because we're not binding you to membership if you got something demonic going on. 
We just want you to come to our deliverance meeting to get free. Are, are, are you hearing me? We want you free from this demonic infestation. But this is why it's called uh, the dung. Uh, that's all the mess uh, that went, watch this, uh, of the people in Israel. It went through the dung gate. And watch this, because it represents deliverance ministry. Deliverance ministry is nasty. But this gate must be repaired. It must be be restored. Hear me. Hear me, Destiny Center. Watch this. The way in which you present it, the way in which you do it may be different, but do not move away from deliverance. Some things have nothing to do with the flesh. Some things need a good come out. It's called deliverance. Now, 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 listen to me. Listen to me. There's people who are preaching against it. And then they have people within their communities who feel like they're crazy because they're bound by something that they want to get free from, but the community they're in saying it's not demonic. So they begin to accept it as normal. So if I'm always having uncontrollable thoughts of lust, and I can't have a demon because I'm a believer because my pastor said so, then this is just something I need to make normal. So normalize demonic oppression. And then, so watch this, when we come along and say you need deliverance, then we're preaching false doctrine is what they say. But I want to tell the destiny center because revival includes deliverance. People are going to come and they're going to manifest, watch this, not even with, with your command, but by your atmosphere. There's sometimes you don't even have to command it. The glory provokes it. Sometimes the service be so high, you ain't, you, no, no, there's just an atmosphere. When this atmosphere gets glorious and heaven comes down to earth, everything illegal begins to run in manifest. That's why sometimes people start coughing, people start manifesting. Why? Not because you did a mass deliverance. The atmosphere provoked deliverance. That's why, watch it. That's why this, 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 this dung gate is important. Listen to me, people. Listen to me. If we've ever been in a time, look at America. I'm not talking political right now. I'm talking, look at what is going on with our president and the stuff that they're rolling out in America. That's opening the door to greater warfare in America. Whenever a Satan's club, Dwayne, feels comfortable in York, PA, to say, we want to use your schools for a Satan's club, and they voted against it, and now they're saying, we're going to sue them. Because y'all going to let us in there to teach your children demonic stuff. Uh-oh, here, 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 here. What that tells me, some gatekeepers are out of the gates. That, 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 that tells me that some gatekeeping people are not in place. Now, hear me, hear me, people, and hear me. Uh, uh, and, and, and I heard uh, of the woman of God prophesying about 13 homicides. And in many of our cities, uh, there's been things that have opened up, but I've got good news for us. Uh, God is raising up uh, a gatekeeping people that said, listen, if no other church does it, not on our watch, we're going to shut this portal down. Listen, listen, that means don't be afraid to say in Jesus' name over the next 30 days, not one murder in Richmond. Don't be afraid to declare that. Let me do this. Religion will have you asking the devil for what you are called to possess. The gates of your what? enemies stay with me you're not told to ask the devil can watch this uh, can you please make sure there's no deaths over the next 30 days no in the name of jesus 
we take authority over premature death we take authority over corruption we take authority over lawlessness we take authority over destruction in the name come on you have the right to legislate it because we're gatekeepers no now just 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 nudge your neighbor and say the dung gate the dung gate the dung gate sure sure we as preachers cannot be afraid of the dung gate the reason why the dung gate is not restored in the context of the local church is because the preachers won't go get deliverance Woo! and so you, they're trying to impart what they're bound by so they're trying to call out something that's working in their own lives I was in a conference, I tell y'all this all the time, I was in a conference in New York, and I was preaching on deliverance. And I was getting ready to do a mass deliverance. And there was a bishop, I won't call his name to protect the guilty. There was a bishop who, 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 who watch this, who without me saying go, he said he was just going to go and pray. So he went to lay hands on a lady. The demon said through her, if you touch me, I'll tell where you was last night. Now watch this. He did a quick U-turn. Came back to the pulpit. I don't recommend wives did this, but his wife went and talked to this lady after the service. Found out he told the wife that one of the saints in the church was hospitalized 2 o'clock in the morning. He lied. He was with one of the women. Y'all hear what I'm saying? That demon exposed him because he thought he was going to cast it out. You cannot cast out what's working in you. I'm going to get in trouble there. That's why. That's why. Preachers got to be those that are not afraid of the ministry of deliverance. Tell your neighbor, I'm not afraid of the dung gate. We all need it sometimes. Come on, somebody. I can't look at you sideways. I need it sometimes. Come on here. We all need the ministry of deliverance. You know, this. Let me move. This. There's pastors that are preaching bitter because they don't submit themselves to some deliverance. And, and, and by right, hear me, I'm not being critical. By right, think about you being a pastor, investing in a people 10 years, counsel them, labor with them, pay their bills, uh, let them sleep at your house, hotel rooms for them. And then they up and go, and the, and the way they leave is text message. But when they needed their bill paid, they never text you. They showed up. Now that pastor's got to get up and a smile on his face, her face, and got to preach to the y'all. Ain't gonna help me here. We got to come on now. And, 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 Think about this now. This is why preachers need a safe place to say, I'm telling you, I'm angry. I, I want to smack somebody. Come on, somebody. I'm angry. Come on. I want to say some stuff I'm not supposed to say. Somebody say, I'm not afraid of the dung game. Deliverance will save your life. Move. Sit down. I'm going to move. I'm gonna sit down a moment. So, so listen. So listen, listen. You don't. Can I? Can I help you? You don't need somebody who's so strong in deliverance ministry to receive deliverance. It's called self deliverance. When you feel certain things festering in your heart, in the name of Jesus. I loose myself from unforgiveness and bitterness and the hurt that I feel in my soul. I loose, come on, yeah, you better do some self-deliverance. You might not be able to get the apostles on the phone. You better loose yourself. No, listen. No. Here's why. Here's why. Here's why. Here's why. Oh, Michelle, here's why. We're about to see 
the greatest wave of deliverance that we have seen in years. No, I'm, I'm talking about people who have been strung out 30 and 40 and 50 years that in one encounter demons of former kid gonna leave their body I, I, I'm, I'm talking about people who are knocking their heads against the wall right now they lost their mind not only is the demon gonna leave their minds gonna come back I'm talking about psych wards being cleaned out y'all better hear what I'm saying yeah 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 the Dungate, come on, uh, let me prophesy to Richmond. The Dungate in Richmond uh, is about to be put up. Y'all better hear me. And people who want deliverance, destiny, they are about to come. I need 50 people to shout in here. Oh, sit down. Give me just 15 more minutes. Just, just, just give me 15 more minutes. Now listen. Listen, so not only gatekeepers, but the gatekeeping people. Watch this. Lay your hands on your belly and say, in the name of Jesus, I release myself into the ministry of deliverance, the ministry of Jesus Christ. Now throw your hands up and shout glory. Now, because of these signs shall follow them that believe in my name they'll do what cast out devils it is not just a few deliverance ministers it's a whole house the ushers cast out devils the media team cast out devils the worship team cast out devils the deacons cast out devils the prophets cast out devils the psalmists cast out devils the minstrels cast out devils the drivers cast out devils it's a culture So, 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 slowly but surely, the gates are being put up. The gates, the gates, the gates. Watch this, watch this now. Watch. Nehemiah 326 says the water gate. Yeah, the fountain gate. Now 326 says the water gate. Now the water gate, watch this, brings an end to us fighting about preaching and teaching. The water gate represents preaching and teaching. So if they're, watch this, flat-footed teacher, you appreciate the instructions. Because preaching is proclaiming, teaching is explaining. What is this thing that we think in order for somebody to be effective, they've got to raise their voice? And then we deem them not, an, not anointed because it's not our expression. There's people who miss whole moves of God because you was waiting on somebody to tune up. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Watch this. Nothing wrong with it. But you got to learn what is God saying, whether it's taught or preached. I need to hear what God is saying. So the water gate is, watch this. The water gate is, at, 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 at times, God may have the church in a time where systematically they're teaching. Over the same day, I wish they'd move on to something else. But they come back and they teach. And then they'll come back. And preach what they taught. Just trying to get it in your spirit. Because it represents, watch this. It represents the water gate. Watch. Well, fountain gate is the flow of the Holy Spirit. Water gate is preaching and teaching. Tell somebody we need them both. Say it again. We need them both. Watch. So, so, so watch. You see, number six is that a water gate. Number seven is uh, Nehemiah 329. It is, somebody say, the east gate. So, with all the gates being restored, the east gate is the gate of glory. Watch. He said that there needs to be glory in the context of the local church and glory in the territory. But it's got to be restored in the local church. Destiny Center, 
You are gatekeepers of the glory. Hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. Not your neighbor and tell your neighbor, say, protect the glory. T tell them again, tell them, protect the glory. Now, now, why am I saying this? Because listen to me, listen to me, and hear me clearly. Watch, these gates being restored are powerful. But this glory gate, watch this, was important in the life of Israel. And let me say to Richmond, uh, let the glory gate uh, in this city uh, be restored uh, in the name of Jesus. I wish I could get 50 praises. I'm coming. I wish I could get 50 praises that would praise with me about the glory gate in this city being restored can I get you to praise just praise we don't just need anointing nothing wrong with anointing we need glory when glory comes anointing is no longer needed anointing can I tell you why we've not seen levels of glory like we've been asking for in anointing you can be anointed and remain nasty that's anointing realm glory realm he says no flesh will glory so the glory realm requires another depth and another death. So if we want glory, we've got to die, which means, watch this, which means, now hear me, and I'm not being critical, which means I've got to learn how to submit to the Holy Spirit's conviction in the area of sin I'm in. I'm asking for glory, and he's challenging me in fornication. And he said, you can stay in anointing realm, but if you're going to come in the glory, you're going to have to be pure. Y'all going to help me here. That's why the glory gate, oh Lord have mercy, uh, is about to be restored by a remnant of people. I want to know, is there anybody in here that want the glory gate to be restored? Sit down. Just a few more moments. Sit down. A few more moments. A few more moments. More moments. Uh, right there, praying the Holy Ghost. Come on. Shubatala Badoya. Come on. Come on, praying the Holy Ghost. Yando do do bokora badaya. Libro standa. Libro diando. Come on. Come on. Just sixty seconds. Come on. Put something there. Yeka taya. Yando ya. Yendo lo bokora mandada la bora deya. Librando. Librande. Librende yando la bakande. Libori adoya. Yando lo bokora badaya. Come on, destiny center. I feel something breaking. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yele bora badaya. Let me. That's any sudden. Let me move. Let me move. Let me move. Show Dwayne. I gotta move here. Because I gotta get this. But the Lord said that as this house transitions into the, these realms of glory, I felt when I came on this ground, when Deshaun pulled up, I'm moving. I felt the levels of witchcraft. But I want every witch to know. I want every warlock to know. I want every worker of darkness and every curse. I'm coming. Uh, I want everyone that's been planting and releasing stuff on the ground. Uh, yeah, every point of contact that has tried to curse this house. Uh, yeah, that by apostolic authority that your assignments are going to die in the glory of God. I need somebody to shout. Hexes and spells, incantations and witchcraft and divination. It will die in the name of Jesus. Somebody praise him. I'm moving. I'm moving. I'm moving. I'm moving. I'm moving. All right. Sit down. Sit down just a moment. I'm coming. Oh, 
the enemies enemies in gates they get afraid when they know you're on your way I gotta go nudge your neighbor and tell your neighbor so that the spirit realm can also hear you say neighbor we're on our way There's a prince in Katapahoya in the mountains that knows that something is being built, something apostolic, something prophetic, something kingdom. And there is a sending agency. I'm not talking about another church right now. And those demons are getting nervous and principalities and territorial spirits say, so let's do everything we can do. Let's slander their names. Let's try to bring an Absalom in the house. Let's try to bring Sheba in the house. But I declare no weapon formed against this house will be able to prosper. I heard this. I heard this and the Lord said, he said, tell this house, come on all nations, if you'll join in. He said, if they'll praise me, I'll break everything that's been trying to hit this house financially. God's about to give this church a financial breakthrough. God's about to give this house financial liberty. I need somebody to... Praise him. He's about to give it to this house. Hey. Now listen. Listen. I feel something happening. Let me prophesy destiny center in the name of Jesus. That from now on to the end of the year. I declare financial breakthrough. Can I get 50 people to praise in there? I said praise. Just nudge your neighbor and say, neighbor, the same anointing that's in this building is hitting your bank account. I need you to praise him there. Yeah. Come on, 30 seconds, give it to it. Sit down, sit down, sit down, yeah, sit down a moment, sit down, I know, I know, I know, I know, it was meant for Deshaun to tell me, you know, whenever, listen, Whenever there's an attack that starts hitting the people, it's indicating something in the territory. And when he told me, what it, I said, oh, so the devil is trying to suck the money dry in this house. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Uh, because uh, of this being uh, a gatekeeping house. Can I tell you something? The devil will fund churches that won't do nothing. But apostolic churches, it's like we war against Jezebel. To liar and mammon trying to snuff us up, but I got good news. The gates are about to be repaired. I gotta go. Gotta go. Gotta go. Gotta go. Sit down. to get these. I'm gonna finish this. I'm gonna finish this. Gotta understand. Somebody say, somebody say the valley gate. Nehemiah 3, 13, the valley gate. 
The valley gate represents God bringing us to a place of brokenness and humility. It represents a basement. Paul says, I know in whatever state I'm in, how to be a base and how to be a bound. The valley gate, it watch this, it holds us together because a broken and a contrite heart, the Lord will not what? Despise. It's, 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 it's this valley gate. I got to go. I'm moving. I'm moving. Watch. But then there is, somebody said the horse gate. Nehemiah 328, the horse gate. The horse gate represents spiritual warfare. The, the, the horse gate was repaired by the priest in Nehemiah 3.28. Watch this. It re represents spiritual warfare because horses are known for their speed and strength. <laughs> As a matter of fact, the armies of heaven followed Jesus upon white horses. Revelations 19 and 4. And, and, and so, watch. When we're restoring the horse gate, we're, watch. We're talking about, like Nehemiah in 52 days, watch. He restores these walls and watch and these gates. But this horse gate being restored means there's going to be a people of momentum or speed in the spirit. But they're not going to have so much speed where they're not strong at the same time. I need you to watch this. I need you to kiss this. Prophesy to your neighbor and say, neighbor. Not only are you going to run strong, your life is going to live strong. I need 30 people to praise right there. Praise right there. Yes, hear me. Hear me. And I'm, I'm, I'm moving. This house will not lose momentum because the citizens are being built and they move. And then the enemy tries to knock the breath out of them where it throws the house back a little bit. Oh, come on here. But this a uh, horse gate is going to be uh, speed and strength. Just release on your neighbor and say, in the name of Jesus, I release strength on your next assignment. Somebody give him praise. Give him praise. I'm moving. I'm moving. I'm moving moving just just three more watch hey 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 destiny I release strength I release the speed of the spirit uh, on this house uh, in the name of I release apostolic strength uh, on this house uh, to build uh, the oh uh, to build the city uh, and to restore the gate uh, in the name of G I declare confusion uh, upon every demonic confederacy uh, that would try uh, to all be on those in the neighborhood of us to watch your weaknesses I scatter the blood on every CIA demon and every familiar spirit I scatter the blood every watcher spirit every scanning spirit you will not be able to set them up I break every assignment connected to every temptation of lust and perversion yeah in the name of Jesus I declare this house will be strong can somebody break I'm moving. I promise you I'm moving. Hey. 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 Now, many theologians pronounce this a different way. But watch this. Why some pronounce it, watch this, Mythcad. And it's, 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 it's a gate, but it's in Nehemiah. Watch. Three in 31 this gate being restored represents judgment and reward oh my. it represents judgment on demonic stuff and the spoils of war as reward so when we hit the demonic realm that's the judgment. The reward is the people that we get. Now, hear me and hear me quickly. I believe that more than, watch this, more than ever before, watch this, we're about to see God release apostolic judgment. Let me go. Number 11, Ephraim Gate. Nehemiah 8 and 16. Ephraim Gate. Ooh. Ephraim Gate. 
I'm coming home. Ephraim gate, watch this, Nehemiah 8, 16, is double fruitfulness. Productive. Prophetic and apostolically, it means, Dwayne Shell, spiritual reproduction. It means raising up. Huh. Men and women. Double fruitfulness. Lastly, and we're about to pray into this. Lastly, Nehemiah 12, 39. 12 gates. It was the prison gate. Somebody say prison gate. Oh my. This was the last gate. But the last gate restored was the prison gate because it represents full commitment as a prisoner of Christ. I'm fully committed to the vision of this house as a prisoner of Jesus Christ to help repair, restore apostolically the gates. It's bigger than a local assembly. It's in a city. It's in a region. We will apostolically repair the gates. Lift your hands. Mine. Mine. Lift your hands. Musicians, in a moment, I want you to go up and lead me. But for about three minutes, all over this building. I don't know about Armando stuff. I know we've been pressing tonight. That's what Revival Nights is about. That you leave knowing that you had to press past your flesh from working all week. Then driving here and everything you had to do. And physically you may be tired. Even just mentally from the things you had to do uh, this week. And maybe even just emotionally. And that's fine because you're in the right place. But for the next three to five minutes. Destiny Center, all nations uh, and every church represented here. Uh, what I need us to do. Watch this. Uh, let's just seal this night. Because uh, I listen. I know in my spirit I had something else. And the Lord put this in me two days ago. I had something else in my spirit and he said that the gates are going to be restored but not only gates the gatekeepers and a gatekeeping people and the difference is that what's going to happen in Richmond is that as the gatekeepers begin to take their place what's going to happen is the enemy will not be able to get in like he has in times past because the gatekeeping people are going to rise and help man the gate and I want to say to you in this house listen whether you are here with destiny or all nations or wherever you're from I believe that all over America we're about to see this but tonight while we're here I need just 50 believers that will help me push in the spirit and begin to open up your mouths and begin to praise come on musicians and begin to praise come on just begin to open up your mouths and begin to pray a moment come on just a moment don't be afraid If you got to sit there, I want you to push into this. Go! I want you to push into this. We will possess the gates of the city. I prophesy in the name of Jesus that that anointing to possess the gates is coming on this house. Y'all ready? The next one minute. Pray in the Holy Ghost. That's all. Y'all don't go to the behind. Don't pray in English. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on. 30 more seconds. 30 more seconds. You can't tell me about the Yeah, Basica, Lebo, Lemanda, Yandora, Bacone, Bacaya, Nibori, Andora, Bacaya. 
Hey, you're the book of the Messiah. Oh, my Satan. In the book of, come on. In the name of Jesus. Every illegal power controlling the gates in this city, we declare in Jesus' name, your time is up. Your time is up. We decree all ancient powers that have manned the gates. We decree that there is a new breed rising all over Richmond. In the name of Jesus, there's apostolic leaders, prophetic leaders, didactic leaders, evangelistic leaders, pastoral leaders uh, who will restore the gates. Come on, destiny. Uh, we decree uh, that upon this house uh, is an anointing uh, to repair, to restore the gates. I need you to jump on your feet for the last minute. For the last minute. Get on your feet. Come on, we about to do it. Hey. Hey. Now watch this. This last minute, this is what I see in the spirit. There are some who are going to lose their authority. In the realm of the spirit, some even evil, oh my, evil men and women. And I want you for the last minute, all I want you as Judah is to lose praise. And I'm telling you, there's a divine transaction. There's a divine transition that's about to happen over the next minute. One, two, three, shout!